I had to describe Tom Wills in one word, I would say thorough. Honest. Fair. Humble. Inspiring. Good man. That's two words. Kind. Professional. A mentor. Perfectionist. Passionate. The word is genuine. He is the real deal. When people heard we were doing this special, they would come and ask me, so is this, does this mean you're retiring? And my answer is no, no, it doesn't, no, no, I'm not retiring. In fact, as soon as the special is over, I'll be in the newsroom getting ready to do the next newscast, um, happily. We ought to get this out there right away, quickly and definitively. Tom Wills is not going anywhere. I have a lot of ghosts up here. But I, you know, I come for my family. I mean, that's why, that's why I come. Before my parents died, I would come here every June and every December. And I would fly up here and rent a van and go to the school, go to AVS and pick up Bob in his wheelchair and drive him out to my parents' house. And we would have you know, in December we would have the, you know, the, the family Christmas out of the house. Uh, Bob was born prematurely and he, his oxygen was cut off in the course of the birth and he was born with cerebral palsy. It was a terrible blow to my parents. You know, they were having their second child. Bob and I are four years apart. And the doctors told my parents when he was a baby that he would not live past the age of six. Well, they were wrong. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Hi, Bob. You too. Hi, Bob. You too. Good to see you. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. How are you? How are you? Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. What's this? That's your mustache. You've never had a mustache before. I love it. I love it. Let me show you what I brought. This is my brother Bob, and he's four years younger than I am. And uh, as you get older, there are fewer and fewer people that you've known all your life. And I've known Bob all of my life, and, and he's known me all of his life. Right. And we grew up together here, here in Pittsburgh with our mother and dad and our aunts and uncles and our cousins. And Bob lives at Allegheny Valley School, and he's lived here since the 70s. He's one of the longest time residents of, uh, of Allegheny Valley School. And we're big uh, sports fans, yeah. Penguins, Penguins fans, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Pirates fans? Yeah. Yeah. Steelers fans? Yeah. Yeah. And his favorite thing in the world is wrestling. Right? Right. WWE? Yeah. <laughs> Monday Night Raw. What time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. I know you'll be watching. I know you'll be watching. Yeah. About a month before Christmas, I started asking him what he would like, and, and usually, most years, what he asks for is a wrestling DVD. So I bring him a DVD, a wrestling DVD. But this year, he's asked for a new TV because he wants a big TV because he's spent so much of his life watching television. There's your Christmas present. Yeah. Give me a kiss. Yeah. Here you go. What do you think? 
Ja? Ja? Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Bob. Thank you. If I could describe Bob and Tom's relationship, it is brotherly love. Tom loves Bob unconditionally, and Bob the same with uh, Tom. Unconditional brotherly love is how I would describe it. Thank you. Fantastic. We're off to the Console Energy Center. What what times uh, what times the Penguin game start? Like that. One o'clock. Yeah. And and who are we playing? I was kidding. Ottawa Senators. Yeah. This is where we're going, so that's a good thing. On the Sidney Crosby, the Penguins. The Martin left side pass over to Wally Matter. This head up shoots deflected. In the net it goes, it might have been Sutter. He is happy. I've never really known him to be unhappy. I know he's he's had some some difficulties and you know some temporary things, but by and large, he's a happy guy and very accepting of his situation. I've never heard him complain. He really he he's an example to me. He's an example to me. You know, this was a wonderful place to grow up. Um, the neighborhood was filled with kids. So we had uh, friends who were boys, friends who were girls. We all hung out together. Uh, there, was, there was a gang of us. And we rode bikes together. And we went to the veterans hospital over the fence. And we bought cigarettes, which we weren't supposed to do. But you went in there and you bought cigarettes for 20 cents a pack. And we went and played baseball on the, on the veterans hospital field. And I really know the neighborhood because I was the paper boy from about the age of 12 till about the age of 14 or 15. And the funny thing, I was thinking back about being a paper boy. It was such a valuable experience. It was my dad's idea. Working was not my idea ever, but it was my dad's idea. He kept me working. And looking back on it now, I learned a lot from that paper route. You know, the delivering the papers wasn't bad. You know, it took an hour and a half after school to deliver those papers, but going with my little bag, my canvas bag with change and knocking on the door to collect, you know, a dollar eighty, <laughs> whatever it was. And there were people who would be waiting by the door with the money to pay you. And then, you know, there were other people who wouldn't answer the door. You could hear them in there and I'm Mr. Tommy Wills is out here to collect for the paper. They wouldn't answer that door. So I learned perseverance. <laughs> Because, you know, that money came out of my pocket if it didn't come out of your pocket. I was accepted in three colleges. Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Penn State, and American University. It was really, it was between Dickinson and AU. I wanted to go to Washington. I was a member of the Wien Team Redcoats in Arlington, Virginia. I was the news director. I don't know who I directed because it was kind of just me and a, and a part-time person, but for some reason they called me the news director. So my two radio heroes were first Paul Harvey, good day, and this guy in Pittsburgh, Al Julius, who was doing news on the rock and roll station that I listened to as a kid, KQV. And he would always sign off his newscast, this is Al Julius. So I'm on WAMU AM and I'm signing off as this is Tom Wills. A little dramatic, perhaps, a little pretentious, but I, you got to have a gimmick. And there was an ad in broadcasting that WTOP in Washington, D.C., I'm over in Arlington, Virginia, was going to start an all news operation. So I applied. I actually think that Jim Snyder hired me because I looked like one of the demonstrators. And he sent me out to cover all these anti war demonstrations of people who were my contemporaries. Everything good that happened to me in my career for the first 20 years was all Jim Snyder's doing. He was my teacher. He was my editor. From time to time, I would get the wanderlust, as any 20-something would. I would, I would uh, say, I need to move to San Francisco. And I'd go and pitch this to Jim. And he would say, go back downstairs. I'll tell you when you're ready to go somewhere else. It was his idea for me to come to Jacksonville. He took me out to lunch. And he said, how would you like to go to Jacksonville to be the weekend television anchor? 
My television experience at that point had been some reporting, and I anchored the midday news on Christmas Day. Not even my mother would have been watching. The people in Washington called me up one day and they said, we think we have a guy up here that might fit the bill. So I went up and saw him audition. Well, not audition. Yeah, he did. He auditioned on the air. He'd never been on television. He was a radio announcer, uh, which made it a difficult decision whether he could really handle the uh, pressures of television. Well, in my innocence, I said, I think he'll go. So I made him an offer. He said yes, and we came to, he came down maybe two weeks later. You know, my wife is an awfully good sport, and we loved Washington, D.C. And she was a good sport. When I came home and said I have a chance to go to Jacksonville, she said we'd come down here. But I said to Tom, let's give it six months, and then we'll be out of here. Um, yeah. So we're coming down 95, and we cross over the Fuller Warren Bridge, and I see the St. John's River for the first time in my life. Whoa, look at that. Wow, it looks like a Chesapeake Bay. What a place for a sailboat. I'm thinking this to myself. I'm not mentioning it to the bride, you know what I mean? And it wasn't very long here, though, before I fell in love with uh, Jacksonville and Channel 4. And at the same time, my wife Gina was also falling in love with Jacksonville. And it, it wasn't very long before we weren't going anywhere. This is WJXT Jacksonville, and this is Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody. I'm Tom Wills. And it was really Tom who taught me about the culture of Channel 4 when I first came. Um, it was really Tom who taught me about the culture of high expectations about our obligation and our responsibility to do right by this community uh, to make it a better place and to make it a better place for all people and we, we we used to say you know we took our responsibility really seriously we just didn't take ourselves very seriously <laughs> At French's, we know what we're made of. Only the finest quality ingredients. Introducing new French's ketchup. No preservatives, no artificial flavors, and unlike some others, no high fructose corn syrup. Just great ketchup taste. New French's ketchup, the French's way. Beach Boulevard Automotive gives you a whole new perspective on the car buying experience. With over 300 vehicles, we are the largest independent dealer in Jacksonville. And our great buy here, pay here programs will get you in the car of your dreams. With certified mechanics on staff, you'll always get professional and courteous service. The best in selection, the best in financing, and the best in service. That is Beach Boulevard Automotive. One wants to thank you, Florida. Our 200th store is now open, and today every Mattress One is celebrating. Save on a Serta adjustable base with memory foam mattress, just $9.99. Get two free memory foam pillows and mattress pad. Plus, pay zero interest for three years or ask about one year no credit check. Get free express delivery, set up removal, and enjoy our 120 night sleep comfort guarantee. Thank you, Florida. Visit mattressone.com to find one of 200 locations near you. All new odds. If you want a banging body like Beyonce, listen to this guy. Which is uh, Beyonce's favorite of these? The 22-day revolution to get your body beach ready. All new odds. Tomorrow at 4 on Channel 4, the local station. In a band that achieved international fame. Well, I hope you're young and You can't even realize, seeing one of these things on television, exactly what a crash of this magnitude looks like. Up there, sitting against the tree, is a piece of an airplane wing, torn away from the rest of the airplane. You know, I, re I do remember that it was just extraordinary that Channel 4 was there, got to the site, and that Tom went, and Tom's experience with knowing that this marvelous, highly talented group of Jacksonville boys were gone.
and he was really the person on the scene that could tell people what he saw and what happened and how how he took that experience to heart penis billy powell drummer artemis pyle and another passenger managed to climb through a window and go for help and i still re always remember going into those woods it was just joe and me there was nobody else there there was no tape around it there was the wreckage of the plane ghastly but we came back home and we put together a half an hour special called need all my friends and if ever there was a time that leonard skinner needed all their friends it was at that time i think tom became the face of that the first reporter on the scene the only reporter on the scene to be able to tell the story it's chilling he just he did it with such grace and respect to this day he's on the video in the rock and roll hall of fame i mean how long that will will run and he'll always be telling the story of leonard skinner he felt deeply that tragedy and you know sometimes when you're reporting the news you want to cry too and i had on multiple occasions probably cried on the air i certainly laughed a lot but um it's your job to remain composed and Tom could always call on that strength to remain composed in situations like that. If you could have Tom Wills tell your story, your life story, what a gift. Three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. I'm a child of the space age. I was a kid when Sputnik was launched. I remember Gemini, Apollo 11, all of the Apollo missions. So to report those tragedies, to think of those brave Americans, those, those explorers, awful, horrible. And to know I was coming in that day and I'd be working with Tom, we would get through whatever it was we had to get through together. And that was a real source of comfort. And I would say it was a source of comfort for everyone in the newsroom. Um, because there was this solid base, there was this foundation, this was their... Um, I wouldn't say that Tom was like a father figure, I wouldn't say that at all. Um, because he really was a colleague, but a colleague that you deeply respected. So today we remember them in sorrow and in love. We say goodbye. To have something like that happen on the other side of the world, from a ship based at Mayport, and when President and Nancy Reagan came to the base, Deborah and I were out there. We were privileged to be out there, but we were painfully aware of what they were doing, going around and extending the nation's condolences to each one of those families. Both Deb and I were reduced to tears. Whether or not our air in Jacksonville really is harming us is a question that's often been set aside. Despite headlines that Jacksonville has one of the highest lung cancer rates and the highest acid air concentration in the nation. Channel 4 has had a long history of aggressive investigative reporting. One of the documentaries we did that was an, an investigative report was called The Smell of Money. And it irritated Mayor Godbold no end. Because what we did was call attention to the fact that the paper mills and, and Glidden Durkee were putting out all these odors that were synonymous with Jacksonville. And we asked the question, is this really necessary? Can these odors be cleaned up? But now Jacksonville doesn't smell anymore. What I'd like you to do is tell me how a car would end up hitting this thing. Easy. A car will be on the mainline traffic. With all the traffic accidents that we have here in Jacksonville, we step back and ask, okay, most traffic accidents are caused by bad driving. We brought in some experts from out of the state and I went around with them, as the other reporters did too, and they pointed out things to us that we live here and we drive these roads all the time that we hadn't given a thought. And he showed us things like, you have a concrete utility pole that is right next to the curb so that if a car veers off the pavement just a little bit, it's gonna crash into this utility pole. Whereas if you move the utility pole back eight feet, the car wouldn't hit it there'd be far less damage and, and far less risk of injury. The whole attitude has been 
from formerly from the JTA, now from Mr. Cook, now from the new DOT uh, secretary, uh, is that uh, the public be damned and we're going to still keep tolls, but we're just going to spread them out and do it a little bit differently. Uh, it started with they raised the tolls on Butler Boulevard. And so naturally, there's going to be a hue and cry. There was on the part of the drivers. But our news director at the time stepped back and said, OK, we're covering these complaints about the increase in the tolls. Why do we have tolls at all? And he sent us all out to explore that question. Why do we have tolls at all? And it led to a referendum put in front of the voters, asking them if they wanted to get rid of those tolls. We're stopping traffic on I-95 on the Fuller Warren Bridge to frisk people for 25 cents. It's not the most efficient method of tax collecting. Now, we presented the other side as well. There were business leaders here in town who said, oh no, it's a user fee, let's stop and let's make these people pay for using that bridge by taking money out of their pockets. But instead, the voters approved a local option half cent sales tax increase that got rid of the tolls. If they would have let me, I would have gone out there with a sledgehammer and taken it to one of those toll booths myself, but I'm just a paid professional observer. I got to watch it. You want that? What? The, the is, is it pretty decent? Yeah, but I saw, I, they saw the back off of it. But, uh, you know, I have been doing this for a long time, but there's always something new that I've never seen before. That's part of what makes being a journalist satisfying is there's always something new. And when Jennifer Waugh did this investigation on guns in the hands of kids, she had undercover police video. And so we actually got to see real kids buying real guns. And it was chilling. Have the parents uh, suspected that something's wrong with them or they've disappeared or something and just not sure? That crime was in 1990. Several years later, I met and became very close friends with Christina Powell's father and mother. So I got to hear from them personally what they went through, how they overcame it. Both of those people are tremendous people of faith. And she walked out the front door and she never came home. We found Maddie Clifton this morning at about 7.30 a.m. She was dead. The Maddie Clifton story is probably the greatest um, personal tragedy, but for both families and for all families in this community, this darling little girl and this very troubled young man. And, you know, when you realize that can happen anywhere to anyone, um, and we all feel so vulnerable. And I think the leadership of Channel 4, and this is part of that culture that I spoke about, the culture of Channel 4 is that it's our job to tell moving, true stories and to do so in a way that is respectful for and caring for our audience. During stories like Maddie Clifton, at that time, I was out in the field covering it as a reporter. When I came back at the end of the day, he found me and he said, Joy, how are you? You know, he said, great job later, but he wanted to know how I was covering something like that. He cared about how I felt. Being with Tom on the set and through some of the most painful stories, both of us agree that the hardest stories to cover are children, abductions, murders, torture. It's so sad. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when sunshine I was a new mom at the time. And as much as it is our job as journalists to um, take a step back, be calm, cover the news as it's happening. I mean, I'm walking through this crowd, and there are people who are crying and children who are crying, and then I see Summer's mom, and they're singing this beautiful song that I remember singing as a child that I taught, I was planning to teach my own children, You Are My Sunshine. It's overwhelming. 
Tom's questions that night uh, helped certainly, um, I think, calm everyone. Not just me, but everyone in the community, because Tom is, has been doing this a very long time. Um, he's always a father, always a journalist, and knows that it's important that we, and we are conveying information about a missing little girl, that we have to get all of the information out there, that we have to be as calm as possible so that there isn't any panic, and help spread the word to our viewers what they need to know to help in a terribly sad, emotional time like we experienced in our city and in Orange Park. You know, people ask me all the time, how do you report those horrible stories? Christopher Barrios, Haley Cummings, Makia Coney, Summer Thompson, Cherish Periwinkle, Maddie Clifton, Trishana Davis, how do you report those horrible, horrible stories without it affecting you? It does affect us. I've been doing this for a long time, 40 years. There's a lot of good in the world. In fact, if you step back and look at it, there's more good in the world than there is evil. But there is evil. This, Justin, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The coverage was all being handled by the networks, but we ended their coverage at 6 o'clock and did a local newscast. I... <laughs> My parents took me to New York when I was 16. I love New York. So this was like personal. When I lived in Washington, I, I, part of the time I was there, I lived in Northern Virginia. I used to drive by the Pentagon all the time. So it was personal. And I'm from Pittsburgh, Somerset, Shanksville, they're right side by side. So I knew about where that plane had crashed. It, it still grieves me today after all these years. The first anniversary of 9-11, uh, the station sent me to New York to do some coverage and I went to that church right near Ground Zero where all those memorials were and I had the truly the privilege of flying over that hole in the ground in a helicopter and looking down at where the World Trade Center had been and now it was just a hole so it, it was gripping to fly over that but I tell you the thing that touched me the most there was there was all this plywood around Ground zero, the hole in the ground, okay. And, <laughs> people just like you and people just like me had come there with magic markers and had written messages of condolences. You know, we're Americans. Those were Americans. Most of them were Americans who died that day. And it's, all they did was go to work. And they wound up as, as war casualties, which is what I believe the fight against terrorism is, I believe it's a war. And those innocent people wound up as war casualties, and it touched the hearts of everybody who has everybody who's seen Ground Zero. Beach Boulevard Automotive gives you a whole new perspective on the car buying experience. With over 300 vehicles, we are the largest independent dealer in Jacksonville. And our great Buy Here, Pay Here programs will get you in the car of your dreams. With certified mechanics on staff, you'll always get professional and courteous service. The best in selection, the best in financing, and the best in service. That is Beach Boulevard Automotive. The Morning Show keeps your family safe with breaking news alerts. The advisory means that it's happening right now. Now to a crime alert. Police are searching for the person who fired several shots. Taking breaking news alerts to a whole new level. It is just absolutely an entire mess. Now we're following actually two major traffic alerts. Uh, now to that local breaking news alert that we continue to follow in Riverside. When news is changing fast. There's lots to talk about on this Weather Authority Alert Day. It's a story you'll see only on 4. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen.
Well, this is the church of my childhood. This is the church that my parents brought me to when I grew up here. Uh, I went to youth group here. So the seeds of my faith were planted in this church. I didn't know it at the time, but I know it now that the seeds were planted. It took until I was the age of 40 for the seeds to bear fruit, but they did finally bear fruit. I had a uh, personal crisis, self-imposed crisis, and I reached out and I had uh, an epiphany. And I, I, I felt the presence and it changed me. I used to, uh, up until the age of 40, I had a personal motto that I lived by. I didn't tell this to a lot of people, but I knew it. Where there's a wills, there's a way. But I wasn't talking about any other wills, it's just this wills. And so I lived on self-will and I came to shipwreck. And so since I was 40 till now, I try to live by God's will. What do you want me to do each day? I believe today that the Holy Spirit in me reached out to God. I didn't even know enough to consciously reach out, but God came to me and I've since learned, I believe that the Holy Spirit in me reached out to God without me saying a word. But I was, I was a wreck. I was very unhappy. My life completely turned around. God put people in my life who were a lot smarter than I am. And you know, people, when, when you have success in life, whatever it is you do, People will ask you, what is the secret of your success? And if you were to ask me that question, I would say I was teachable and I had great teachers who showed up unexpectedly, always unexpectedly. Uh, Tom is a, um, a humble, patient, uh, considerate man. And a lot of that comes from his faith, uh, trying to pass that on. Uh, and, and being a good example of, of the way that, uh, that, that Christ would be. Um, and, and the way to do that is not generally by telling people, but by showing them. And, uh, and I think that's what Tom does successfully um, just about every day. I can't even remember who, who was the boss that came to me with this idea. We're gonna do, would you like to do a series of positive stories, we'll call it Positively Tom Wills. And a lot of them were faith. And we did one around Easter time called What is a, uh, what is a Christian? Like the majority of Jacksonville families, the Johnsons are raising their daughter to be a Christian. But in this day and time, what exactly is a Christian? And the audience was huge. And all I did was go around and I asked some nuns at Assumption, I asked um, the minister in Springfield. Pete, what is a Christian? I asked a rabbi, what is a Christian? And it was, it was powerful. And I was like, I can't believe I'm getting to do this. You know, this is a real departure. And um, they were fun, fun stories to focus on things that were positive. Because all through the years, you can't be a news person without hearing people say to you, there's so much negativity on the news. Well, here we were, we're giving them something that's positive. We're even letting them know that it's positive. We're calling it positive. It was neat. Now for a story that is positively jacked. Patients at Wilson Children's Hospital are playing with pets at the Humane Society from their hospital beds. So that was 10 years ago that we did Positively Tom, but now we call it Positively Jacks, but the name doesn't really make any difference because we're always looking for positive stories for our community and about our community. I picked Kevin up after school. He's in seventh grade at Paxson Junior High. How was school today? Great. It's gotta be the best time of day to get in that time. It is. What would you like to do this afternoon? Run. Me? Run? I met a lot of wonderful, children who through circumstances were minus a parent most of them were minus a father in their in their family the wonder of the big brothers big sisters program the work that they do 
to bring adults and children together and what a difference it made in the lives of these children. I got to profile these kids. I got to have a lot of fun. And who says there's no good news, okay? We put that on the news and we said, look at this child. And when we'd run Wednesday's child, the next day, the next morning, the phones would light up at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Long's Wholesale Furniture. Guaranteed low prices. Sofas starting at $339.99. Mattresses up to 20% off. Cash, check, credit, and financing available. Only $49 down and take your furniture home today. Apply in-store or online. Long's Wholesale Furniture. 6569 103rd Street. It's time for Jacksonville's 19th Annual Senior Expo. Sponsored by the City of Jacksonville. Learn how to make your investments work for you. Discover exciting travel opportunities and ideal retirement living options, health, recreation, fitness, and much more. And it's all for free. Plus, you could win hourly door prizes and drawings. The Jacksonville Senior Expo, Wednesday and Thursday, May 13th and 14th at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Admission and parking are free. Don't miss the Senior Expo. You make me smile like sun, fall out of bed, sing like a bird, dizzy in my head. Crazy on a Sunday night. Cold Stone has your spring fling flavors. You'll be tickled pink with our pink champagne sorbet creation. Or try our refreshing tart cherry frozen yogurt. Or our red velvet cheesecake ice cream. Only at Cold Stone Creamery, the ultimate ice cream experience. On May 29th, join me for lunch at Claire White Mission for Miracle on Ashley Street. This event features food prepared by local chefs and served by local celebrities. Tickets are $25. Visit ClaireWhiteMission.org for more information. Jack's Federal Credit Union's auto loan rates are 50% lower than the Jacksonville average. It's easy to get pre-approved or refinance your existing auto loan. Plus, anyone in Northeast Florida can join. Visit jacksfcu.org today. Portable toilets haven't changed very much over the past few years. Neither has Amoson's commitment to excellent customer service. When you rent a portable toilet from Amoson's, you can rest assured it will be clean, delivered where you need it, and when you need it. We can provide the most competitive pricing for you. Whether you need 500 toilets for an event with thousands of attendees or just one for that remodeling job at your home. Call Amosons, the leader in sanitation. Are you happy with your child's education? Lighthouse Christian School has been a blessing to our family. My daughter came from um, public education, struggling, and low self-esteem. And at Lighthouse, she is a straight-A student. She is happy, she is uh, comfortable, and our whole family is blessed that she is a student at Lighthouse Christian School. For more information, log on to LighthouseChristianSchool.net. Jack's Federal Credit Union offers over 5,000 shared branches and 30,000 surcharge-free ATMs, in addition to nine branches all around Jacksonville. Open a free checking account and see for yourself. Visit jacksfcu.org today. This is special coverage of Election Night 2014. Your vote counts. Florida voters have made their choice. Anytime someone does something well, it, they make it look easy, right? But the rule is 10,000 hours of practice, right? You need 10,000 hours of practice to be good at something. So when you're covering election night, for example, and it goes really smoothly, looks so easy, doesn't it? Well, that's a lot of practice over a lot of years and a lot of prep. The best comes out of Tom election night. It, it really does, because I think he loves it. He does. I mean, he has notes. Uh, he, he's constantly uh, looking at the online while he's on the desk. Um, and, and fact checking. He's very good about that. Wait a minute, you said this, but it should be this. And he's, he's always doing that, and, and that is so good for us. During elections and other political events, we get a chance to work together. He and I both share a passion, and I don't know anybody else that I can have a spirited, informed discussion about politics more than with Tom. You are sitting next to a fighter pilot. You're the co-pilot. I mean, you know, it's like he knows exactly what to do. 
when to do it, when to say it. Election night scripted to some degree, but after an hour or two, you want to bring a lot of stuff out the window. You're just going by whatever happens, whatever the election night story is. You have to be ready beyond the scripts. You have to have that, that bank of knowledge, which Tom definitely has. Um, and not just from that year's election, but having covered elections in Jacksonville since the 1970s, even before then, um, in Washington, he has that knowledge to draw on. He makes sure he knows the ins and outs, so no matter what happens election night, he's got it covered. Any bizarre thing that might happen, he's covered every angle already in his mind. He's ready. And he's also incredibly balanced. I mean incredibly. You don't know where he stands politically. <laughs> Seriously. I mean that. And you know that you can't say that for a lot of people in the media. It's the answer spoken by young and old rich and poor, Democrat and Republican, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, gay, straight, disabled and not disabled, Americans who sent a message to the world that we have never been just a collection of individuals or a collection of red states and blue states. We are and always will be the United States of America. We were granted an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with President Barack Obama. And to sit there with him in the press briefing room prior to our interview and to have him have a discussion with me about the questions that he was going to ask the president because we were given a very limited amount of time. So he would only be able to ask three questions. And he was asking for my opinion and he was telling me what he was going to ask and I'm like, gosh, this man doesn't need my opinion. He knows exactly what he's going to ask and he's going to ask the right things. And he did. The report that you released today, what is it that you want the American people to know about the progress that you believe you've made? Well, the good news is, is that in uh, rural America... I asked him, I said, what was it like meeting uh, President Obama? And he said it was, it was fascinating, it was interesting. He said, when you get to that level, referring to President Obama, whether it's, you know, uh, any of the other presidents or candidates for president, they have a quality about them that allows, they, they're able to make you feel comfortable very, very quickly, even if it's for a short period of time together. Membership has selected Jacksonville as the 30th NFL club. Holy sh we got it. Look at the team. Football fans, pinch yourself. The Jaguars were just, a, you know, an idea was beginning to kind of come about. And then we got the Jaguars. And it was so fun to see Tom just elated. I mean, just so excited about it. I mean, here's a great story. You know, Tom and Sam going at it, you know, talking about the, getting the Jaguars. And I mean, it's so fun to watch him get so jazzed. It was the impossible. We were the only NFL city with the name Ville in our name, right? I mean, we were like a, we were this small town aspiring to be a really vibrant city. I like to think of myself as somebody who's a, a news gatherer who really gathers information. Well, to have a professional news gatherer standing next to me with a second set of eyes for what was being said, you know, because at that point, both of us, without being cheerleaders, we're pulling for us to get a team. You know, we're, we're like, hey, why you? Why not us? Because, you know, we did all the work. We've got it. Jacksonville is the, is the place that it should be. I walk into the lobby. I happen to know where they keep all of the paraphernalia for the teams. The door was kind of cracked. Pushed it open. Looked in there. Jacksonville Jaguars. Pulled it back. Went over to Tom. And I said to Tom, we're getting a team. You know, those, those are the kinds of things that the, the bond that Tom and I have about that. In that case, he trusted me that I had the right information. And we went with it. He never once second-guessed me. And turns out we were right. The joy that we had, that we shared, we felt with our viewers uh, was just, that was probably one of the best days at work ever. We had such a great time. And we were enjoying ourselves so much along with all the rest of the community. It is truly a show that you don't want to miss. The Super Bowl, that's the single biggest single day sporting event in America. And, 
you know, when you work with really good people and they and they get all that ready, and Tom and I have joked about this a lot, in the end, it's just up to us not to mess it up. <laughs> because it's all ready. The shot's beautiful, the lighting's right, the sound is great, the stadium looks super, the fireworks are going off. Don't say something stupid. And that's one thing you always count on Tom. He's going to rise to the occasion. I think every uh, producer who works with Tom gets kind of beat up a little bit because he asks you a lot of questions and uh, some producers may get frustrated that like, ah, more questions from Tom. Tom Wills will be frustrated if we don't get the story right because it's so important to get the story right. The thing about Tom Wills, he sets the tone for the newsroom. He walks in, he, he's ready to work, He's always helpful, he's encouraging, he's very professional, but sometimes he's downright funny. Like the time I heard him say, why are we writing it this way? I'm going to fall asleep on air if I read it this way. And it's, it's his paying attention to detail, I think, that makes us better. I mean, he, he's an example of what it means to really take pride in your work, in your craft. So one of the things Tom Wills is known for in our newsroom is that he says, sometimes without even being prompted, could you consider doing anything else? This job is great. This is the only, can you possibly think of doing anything better than this? I mean, th those are the sorts of things that he'll say and he'll go, yeah, this is a great job to have. This is a great thing to be involved with. And that's the kind of enthusiasm he still has, even as we go through this 40th year being our main anchor here at Channel 4. Every day you see Tom Wells come in. No one, no one cares more than Tom Wells. No one in the newsroom. He cares more, he's committed more than anybody. So he raises my game because I think, I better get my stuff together. <laughs> I got to keep up with him. You know, I've sat next to Tom for 34 years, and I've seen that over and over, uh, him cover stories, him uh, rewrite stories, bring young reporters along, help veteran reporters kind of solidify what they're trying to say. But the honesty that, that he tries to bring to every story, to me, is his hallmark. That's what he, that's what he does, that's who he is, and to me, uh, that's what the guy sitting in that chair should be. The thing that I really admire about him uh, is that, you know, he's, he's a leader and he possesses all those qualities of, of being a leader and he's got the ability to, to make everyone around him better. I mean, he doesn't, and he doesn't forget about maybe the, the new intern who comes in. He'll go, Mary, what's her name? I mean, he always makes sure to find out who is who in the newsroom so he can go talk to them and let them feel welcome here. And, and you know, that's important because he knows that that intern could be running this place someday. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> well, you always know when Tom is near you because if you're working, you hear him whistling. So, and, and I always know it's Tom because he's the only person I know who whistles in the newsroom. And it's always the same tune and it's just fantastic. He has this unmistakable whistle in the newsroom. <laughs> it's the same whistle <laughs> for 22 years that I know I've been hearing that same whistle every day. But it's so reassuring to hear that whistle in the newsroom because I know, ah, oh, he's here, you know? And, and he, he, he keeps the whole thing going. Don't go to bed yet. It's Friday night. Don't go to bed yet. Wasn't it me who said, don't go to bed yet? <laughs> don't go to bed yet. Don't go to bed yet. And I, I, I have to tell you, when he says it at night, I don't go to bed. Yeah, don't, it's the only thing that's original with me. Everything else has been stolen from somebody else. But I was driving home after the 11 o'clock news. Bill Grove did the 6 o'clock news, and I did the 11 o'clock news for five years. And I was driving home, and all the houses, the lights were off. I'm realizing these people have all gone to bed, and I'm on my way home after work. 
So I started saying, don't go to bed yet. <laughs> Stay up and watch the 11 o'clock news. George Winterling's coming on in a couple of minutes. It's, it's the only thing that's original with me. Don't go to bed yet. What did we do today? Well, before dance class, we donated to Goodwill and helped provide jobs and job training to thousands of people in North Florida. Donate, shop, jobs. Good things for North Florida with Goodwill. One to One Financial Credit Union is here when you need a 15 or 30 year fixed rate new home mortgage, a home equity loan to expand or improve your home, or an easy, simple process to refinance your home. Our credit union officers work with you one to one, making loan applications simple and fast. So call 723 6300 or stop by a One to One Financial Credit Union branch today. One to One Financial Credit Union, taking focus on you. Every year, Goodwill provides job training and placement services for over 56,000 people in North Florida. By donating to your local Goodwill, you will help someone change their life. Donate. Shop. Jobs. Good things for North Florida with Goodwill. It's time for Jacksonville's 19th Annual Senior Expo. Sponsored by the City of Jacksonville. Learn how to make your investments work for you. Discover exciting travel opportunities and ideal retirement living options. Health, recreation, fitness, and much more. And it's all for free. Plus, you could win hourly door prizes and drawings. The Jacksonville Senior Expo, Wednesday and Thursday, May 13th and 14th at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Admission and parking are free. Don't miss the Senior Expo. About two years ago, my brother Jack had a terrible accident. We really didn't know where to turn. So I called Harold and Harold. Everybody was so compassionate and just wondering how I was really doing. And I just, that really hit home with me. Clients are always so grateful that, you know, you did what you said you were going to do. That you, they weren't just a case, that they were a person with real problems. And you took that on and you helped them. We are spending more time outdoors, and you know what that means? Nasty mosquitoes and other bugs. Is there a safe insect repellent out there? We'll find out and also talk about what's going around at 645. You know, we always like to bring you stories about keeping your children safe. Well, it turns out this and playgrounds, not a good idea. What you need to know to keep your children safe tomorrow at 745. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. He was really a hands-on dad. Uh, he was right in the trenches with me, you know. Of course, right now we're seeing grandkids a lot, and we have a son who's engaged, so we, we like going to see where our kids are. They're all across the country, from East Coast out to San Francisco, so we travel and see our kids. There's absolutely no way I could have done this job without Gina's support. We're, we're partners. We have a family there at Channel 4, but we all have our own families at home that we love and who, who support us and are just as dedicated to helping us be successful as we are dedicated to reporting the news to the viewers. Jacksonville's been a place for us to raise our kids, and Jacksonville's been really good to us. Tom loves the news business. He loves the community. He loves his colleagues. He loves his rhythm and his routine and the comfortable nature of knowing that every single day I'm going to be talking to these folks at these prescribed hours. And it just suits him so well. I think there are very few people, frankly, that can stick with anything that long and still love it. And that's the beauty of Tom. He still loves it. I think that Tom's secret to longevity is that he really loves it. He's a newsman at heart. It's not, he's not interested in being a star. He's not worried about the title of anchorman. He's not, he doesn't want to be the managing editor. He doesn't want to be the news director. He just really likes being a newsman. He found a home here when he got in here in the South. You know, we fell in love with him. He fell in love with us. It's been a perfect marriage. Knowing that Tom is going to be there, 
is as good as it gets. Tom continues to set a newsroom guiding principle that serving our community is our priority. And as technology changes the way that viewers get their news, that priority will never waver. It's Channel 4's culture. No one is irreplaceable. I truly believe that, and I think especially in organizations where you have a culture, but there are exceptions. And there'll never be another Tom. There's not that many Tom Wills out there anymore. I get asked from time to time, why are you still working? You've been doing this all these years. Why are you still working? It's, it's you know. So I say to them, listen, my golf game is terrible. And then they laugh. And then I tell them the real reason that I'm still working. I believe in my heart of hearts, all of us are here on this earth to serve each other, to be of service to each other. And I have the privilege with all of these wonderful men and women that I work with, I have the privilege of being of service to our viewers here in Jacksonville. And service is the joy of living.